Hello and welcome to Ratio Christi Television. What should we think about slavery? That's what my next guest will be answering in this episode. Ratio Christi is a Campus Apologetics Alliance. We set up Christian apologetics clubs on university college, community college, and high school campuses. The high school campus clubs were started just a couple of years ago. And the reason why is because we are now preparing high school students for what they will face in college once they get there. That's why Ratio Christi College Prep was started and we think about the 50 to 80 percent fallaway rate of church-going youth who leave the church after high school or by the time they're 22 years old. And that's the reason start ha having clubs on college campuses that we started the high school campuses. So just go to rashochristi.org, go to RCCP at the top. You'll find out more about that, how to get a club started, how to get your child or grandchild into an existing club and all of that. The purpose of our organization is to help make people aware of the evidence for the Christian worldview and to help me people understand truth with a capital T, which is what we call our program, Truth Matters. Joining me is C.L. Edwards. C.L. was born in Detroit, Michigan in Conant Gardens, a historical African-American neighborhood. His family moved from the South to escape Jim Crow and find opportunities in the auto industry. C.L. was raised in the black church as a youth, but later converted to Islam. However, by God's grace, C.L. gave his life to Jesus Christ as his personal savior a number of years ago. C.L., welcome back to Truth Matters. Glad to be back, Tony. It's great to have you here, brother. And this is a timely topic. People think of the, the term slavery, and right away they think, oh, yeah, that is, uh, that's been in, uh, it's been there, done that, as far as that practice that isn't in place anymore today. And people need to know about slavery, uh, the fact that it's still happening, and just more information about it in general. But before we can do that, we need to define our terms, which is also always a great thing to do. Uh, what is the definition of slavery? You're right, Tony. Um, this is not just something in ancient history. Uh, first of all, we need to understand what happened in the past, but we need to understand what's going on right now. And how do we define slavery? Um, quote, especially in the past, a person who is the legal property of another and is forced to obey them. This is from Oxford's Dictionary. Cattle slavery was eliminated from the first world after the abolitionist movement, but slavery has not been totally eliminated from our modern day world. There are some forms of cattle slavery that are still occurring, especially, for example, in the Islamic world. Now, let me give you another quote. There are also some forms of, uh, many forms of slavery persist, including forced and bonded labor, child labor, and slavery for ritual or religious purposes. The world is also now wrestling with a new form of slavery, trafficking in human beings, in which many vulnerable people are virtually abandoned by legal and social systems into a sordid realm of exploitation and abuse. This comes from the UN. This is their statement for the international day for the abolition of slavery. CL, I'm so glad that you brought up those particular forms of slavery because it's very important for people to know about the different forms that are happening today. If all people have is just this uh, African-American slave owned by white European slave, over, slave owner um, idea of slavery, then many times that causes them to look past what's actually happening today and is slavery as well. I'm glad that you brought up the Islamic point, which we'll definitely get into uh, in this show. And of course, the human trafficking, a, a complete tragedy that this is happening even throughout the United States and right under the noses of many people. Uh, how common has slavery been throughout human history? Well, unfortunately, um, slavery has actually been very common. We, look at, we think of slavery and we're totally repulsed, which we should be. But slavery has been common through almost every single culture and every ethnic group. Um, most common, the most common forms of slavery have been um, bondage due to debt. Um, criminals were enslaved. And also you have war cap captives. They were enslaved. But slavery also has taken on the form of um, cattle slavery, where human beings were reduced to basically animals. Now, 
For example, once again, the Islamic Arab slave trade was an ancient form of cattle slavery that persisted for centuries, enslaving non-Arabs and non-Muslims all over the known world. Um, so people need to know that almost 20 million sub-Saharan black Africans were enslaved in that particular slave trade. Also, which many people don't know, over 1 million Europeans were enslaved uh, during the Islamic slave trade. And this is something that is not talked about in the public school books, uh, even more nowadays that the uh, political Islamists have helped water those down even more than they already were. But the mm -hmm. only th uh, history that people really get is, again, this African-American slave owned by a white European slave owner. And it's so important for people to understand, to realize that the Islamic slave trade completely outshined the common slave trade that people think about uh, when they think about European slavery, which, number one, isn't biblical, isn't Christian, quote unquote. Uh, that's another thing to, to bring into this as well. But many times people think that, OK, uh, slavery, again, just first thought, oh, yeah, that, that's a racial thing. Uh, was slavery always based on race? Well, actually, no. For much of history, slavery was not based on race. But I have to go back to my example. The Islamic slave trade was, um, as we mentioned before, enslaved millions of people over eight centuries. And it was based on a racial hierarchy. Uh, European white slaves were traded for a higher price, but black African slaves were traded for a lower price. Also, we find among the Muslim caliphs and the elite, they valued white slaves, especially white women, um, having a white slave or a white set slave especially was seen as a sign of privilege, especially if you had children with them. But on the other hand, uh, black males were castrated, sometimes at the, the age of eight years old, uh, and it was a full castration. And um, white, uh, black female set slaves, when they were impregnated, their children were murdered sometimes drowned. And this is something that people need to be made aware of even when you do, uh, or I should say when you are aware of the Islamic slave trade in uh, contradistinction to the European slave trade, and to see the reasons why they were brought from particular countries to new countries. And that, of course, for the European one, it was for workers, for people to actually work and do labor, wherever that happens to be, where the Islamic one was more so, more so for uh, sex slavery. And that is something that people are not aware of either, and people need to be aware of slavery and in, in all that it entails, not only throughout history, but of course still happening today. Uh, how exactly did slavery become racial in nature? Now, I'd like to take the time, Tony. You hosted a show on the Trinity Channel uh, with Dr. J. Smith entitled Islamic Slavery, the First and Biggest Slavery. Now, I highly recommend that particular video. You guys can Google it or look on YouTube. It goes into a lot of detail about this particular subject. Now, on that show, J. Smith pointed out how the Romans, they enslaved people, but they didn't enslave people merely based on uh, race. And many, many people wrongly believe uh, Race-based slave trades began with the transatlantic slave trade. Now, nothing can be further from the truth. This is not true. It actually began with the Islamic slave trade. Europeans simply copied what the Islamic slave trade did and added a little bit more onto it. Um, also, Europeans purchased their black African slaves from slave ports, slave trading uh, posts and markets being ran by Islamists, or what we call Islamists today. And seeing this does not um, you know, lower the, the evils of the transatlantic slave trade or the slavery that took place in North and South America or the uh, Caribbeans. You, you can never do that. It was evil. Um, in those parts of the, in these parts of the world, um, including where we're at right now, uh, black people by law were regarded as beasts of burden. And even worse, what you pointed out is that in these cultures, they had the Bible, they had the Word of God, yet they still had this blind spot in their worldview. This should serve as a warning to us. We should 
really pray and look for the blind spots in our own worldview, in our own theology. And there are a number of books that people can find. They just simply go on to Amazon or anywhere where you buy books and uh, type in slavery, type in Islamic slavery. You'll get uh, at least a handful of books that have been published more recently, and a lot of people are not aware that they even exist. And number two, uh, they, they aren't worried about, about being politically correct, like, like it is in, in the public school system. Uh, these here are going to give you the uh, info that a lot of people are not aware of, going to give you exact uh, numbers of slaves and all that information. So definitely, yeah. But also, yes, uh, thank you for mentioning the um, the series that we did uh, on uh, critiquing Islam. And there are a couple different videos out there. One by the name that you gave it. Also, two, um, the Islamic slave trade and colorism is another title that people will find for that video. Um, very important information. And we give you pictures and stats and all that kind of stuff. So thank you for mentioning that. Um, how do how did the abolition of slavery come about? Because that's something that uh, some people are a little bit more familiar with. You know, people hear about, say, William Wilberforce, uh, a, a Christian who wasn't one he when he was involved in that, but once he became a Christian, and his Christian worldview is what caused him to want to do away with slavery. Um, John Newton, of course, is a, a major person there as well. Uh, but how did the abolition uh, of slavery come about? You know, the abolition of slavery, uh, the whole movement that we see has taken fruit all over the world today, it began in the Western world. With uh, First, it began with freed black slaves and the Anabaptists, like the Quakers. Um, the leaders of the abolitionist movement, they, for the most part, they were all Christians, and they had a Christian worldview, a biblical worldview, and they abhorred slavery. They saw it a violation of human rights. Um, the basis for the movement, movement was rooted in the biblical worldview. We look at Genesis chapter 1, which teaches plainly that uh, mankind, all types of mankind, have their roots in one man, Adam, and he was created in the image of God. Many people wrongly believe Christianity somehow motivated or justified the North, uh, South American slave trade, the Caribbean slave trade. Nothing can be further from the truth. It's actually the biblical worldview brought an end to cattle slavery uh, with the European powers and in the United States in 1865. Now, this is followed up by almost the elimination of slavery around the known world, even in places that don't even have a Christian worldview influence. Now, there also were slave revolts that influenced the end of slavery here in America. Uh, two of the most famous are the Stono Rebellion in 1739, and the Nat Turner Rebellion in 1831, people began to see that maybe slavery wasn't all that it was cracked up to be or worth the trouble. Um, but the gospel of Jesus Christ is the biggest proof against racism and cattle slavery. Jesus Christ himself never owned any slaves. And he's, he famously taught in Luke 6:31, as you would wish others to do to you, do to them. Also in Acts 17, 26, it plainly tells us he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on the face of the earth. It would be good for some of our viewers to even look up some of the arguments used by the abolitionists. Now, the Quakers officially outlawed slavery among all their members and their community at the time of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. They saw their interpretation, when they saw the Declaration of Independence, they saw that as a declaration against slavery also. They held the, a biblical truth that all human beings uh, were equal and one. And see, it's very important, and I thank you for pointing people to the words of Jesus in the New Testament, because many pe people, uh, especially non-Christians, of course, don't look to the teachings of Jesus when they try to critique uh, the, ex the existence of slavery in the past. They go right to the Old Testament and don't realize that the Bible records certain things that it does not condone. It's a history book uh, t as well as, uh, you know, the, the uh, teachings of uh, Jesus and, of course, the prophets who God used throughout time. It's, it doesn't in, uh, endorse or um, uh, condone every single thing that it talks about. 
It talks about good things. It talks about bad things. But you'll notice that whenever Jesus spoke and the teachings that he gave his followers, those were good things. He never told his followers to enslave anyone or to kill anyone or, hey, if somebody leaves Christianity, then go and kill them. Uh, very interesting when you read the entire Bible and people read good commentaries that give you the in-context information about it at, at that. But again, realizing that there's there's two covenants there. There's an Old Testament, there's a New Testament, an Old Covenant where people were under uh, works, trying to uh, do a certain amount of things to be right with God. And of course, when Jesus had the Last Supper saying, hey, this is the new this is the uh, cup of the new covenant of my blood, and it was his body that was sacrificed for us, his death on the cross, rising from the dead in glory three days later. And this new covenant was no longer between God the Father and the people, but the new covenant was between the Son and the Father. And Jesus, being the perfect eternal Son of God incarnate, was sinless, kept the law perfectly, which no one ever did. And he raised the bar even higher, just in case anyone thought that they could keep it. He kept it. He died. He rose from the dead. And only through repentance and faith in him can we be saved. So very important yeah. distinction that people know, hey, these are the commands of Jesus himself. And again, yes, there are bad things that happen in the Old Testament, but that is a recording of events, not a condoning of events. Nevertheless, what was the worldview basis for the abolition of slavery in the West and other parts of the world. And we already pointed to the book of Genesis, which is in the in the Old Testament, and it establishes the worth of human beings. The book of Genesis tells us that God created humanity in his image, seeing that all men and women are equally human alike. This goes against the arguments of many bigots. Uh, this means that we are all the descendants of Adam, who was created by the hand of God, who was created in the image of God. All of this means that all human beings, regardless of race, gender, nationality, um, whether they're in the womb or whether they're outside of the womb, whether they're healthy, whether they're sick, regardless of religion, they all have intrinsic uh, worth. No group of human beings can claim that, you know, we're more, uh, more of the image of God than those people over there. Nobody can claim that. Um, the problem comes, now the problem comes when attributes like nationality, ethnicity, and physical qualities are used to determine human worth instead of what God said. Or, or worse than that, when certain doctrines like the doctrine of evolution is used to explain human differences and is determined that some human beings are more highly evolved than other human beings. Now, all of that is uh, these are different ways that people use to justify uh, racism, bigotry, even cattle slavery. But if we would just turn to the pure words of God, these sinful acts would not take place. We fill in the, the blindness in our worldview with the words of God, the pure words of God. I'm so glad that you and I are both doing this episode right now, CL, because we can let our viewers know if anyone is uh, confused out there. Uh, Jesus was not white. Jesus was not black. <laughs> he was uh, some shade of brown. <laughs> and it's very important because, you know, we see these pictures of uh, blonde haired, blue eyed Jesus. We see uh, these pictures of African American Jesus. And yes, Jesus is the image of the invisible God, but he was neither black nor white. And Regardless of what he was or what shade of brown he was, uh, he didn't die for a certain uh, shade of skin color. He died for human, the human race. Anyone who repents and puts their trust in him can be saved regardless of skin color. And that is because it is our nature that is the same. Uh, CL and I are, are different people, but we have the same essence or the same nature. We're human beings. And Human beings are what Jesus died for. He didn't die for angels. He didn't die for animals. He died for people who are made in the image of God. Very important information for people. Uh, CL, what was the world, um, I'm sorry, are there still places in the world today where slavery actually still exists in whatever form that happens to be? Yes, and I think we touched on that a little bit in the beginning. Um, we mentioned earlier uh, in in the Islamic world, especially in North Africa, there are still forms of cattle uh, race-based slavery. Also, in other parts of the Muslim world, there is migrant slavery, where migrant workers are held against their will, 
Um, their means of transpl transportation is taken away from them, and they're made to work. And this is essentially a form of slavery. It's, it's also race-based because uh, many of these migrant slaves are um, uh, sub-Saharan black Africans, and many of them are also Asians, and they're being held in uh, Muslim nations, um, in Arab nations to be precise. Um, and all over the world, uh, even in the Western world, there is this ongoing problem of young people, especially young women, being kidnapped or seduced into the sex world and sex trades. And are there other forms of slavery that we need to fight against? Because even though one form of slavery may not be happening in a, a in an area where an individual lives, um, what are the forms that Americans need to be maybe more made aware of than others? Uh, which ones do they need to focus on fighting? Well, I just mentioned set slavery is a huge problem, a very huge problem, bigger than most people can even imagine or realize. Um, all over the world, young girls, even at the age of you know, 11, 12, 13, 14, they're being lured into inescapable bondage. Um, a lot of this is um, done under the, under the guise of a legitimate relationship. These girls, they you know, fall in love with some boy, or maybe they communicate with someone who they believe is a boy. It really is not a boy. It's a, a grown man, a pimp, who is uh, luring them to meet them. And from there, it just goes down downhill. I Many of these, these young girls are sold into uh, prostitution, or they're made to be uh, some other types of sex workers. Um, this also includes forced marriage. Now, that may not be a big problem here in, in, in the United States, even though it does exist in the United States also. But it's a bigger problem in the third world, in other parts of the world, including, not to drill that hammer, but the Islamic world also. Um, you even have family members, um, parents, who will sell their own daughters to older men for them to be wives for a bride price. Now, Explain to me how that's not slavery. Um, but for us in the United States, uh, this set slave trade is a really big thing. If anyone viewing this is being exploited, or if you know of someone being exploited, it's very important to contact the authorities, or you can even contact the National Human Trafficking Resource Center uh, at 1 800 or just contact 911. But uh, this is a big problem. This is a very big problem. And also, the forced marriage is a very big problem, and that's being done under the, uh, the guise of religion. Whether it's secular slavery or religious slavery, we have to, uh, all of us have to be educated. We have to educate others, and if you see something, you have to say something. And that is definitely something to uh, say something about if you are aware of it happening anywhere. And again, any type of slavery, don't let just this one spotlighted African-American slaves owned by European slave owner uh, idea cloud all the other forms of slavery that are happening out there. This is a very vital topic for people to be aware of. It's important to know about religious, about uh, mind control type of slavery, especially when people who you know care about are part of a, a Christian quote unquote cult, a a group which has strayed theologically from Christian orthodoxy. Again, uh, many times when people hear a uh, cult, they hear they think about oh like Jim Jones or like Helter Skelter, small group of people. A theological cult can be any size; it could be millions of people, and it's because they claim to be Christian, but they actually are not Christians who line up with orthodoxy. They've strayed at some point. Yes, they use many of the same terms, God, Jesus, Bible, salvation, grace, mercy, etc. But they have completely different dictionaries that they are using. And CL, as a former Muslim, you know as well how this is accurate with Islam as well. Muslims talk about God or Allah. They talk about Jesus. They talk about um, uh, heaven, they talk about hell, yes. but yes. these are, are much different uh, when you look at the definition compared to Orthodox Christianity. A, a few books that I want to recommend to our viewers, uh, one CL uh, that any Christian would love, and is, it is a great uh, testimony of someone who 
again, when their worldview changed and they became a Christian, they then saw the value of human beings, again, based on their nature, not their skin color. And even the book or movie Amazing Grace, the story of William Wilberforce, and again, uh, John Newton, who once was involved in the slave trade, and then when he became a Christian, uh, wanted to abolish it. That is one from the, the Christian perspective. But also, CL, uh, you know, like I said, I'm glad that you brought up the Islamic slave trade, especially because it is not even talked about. There are a number of books on that, uh, just to name a few. There's a book called Slavery, Terrorism, and Islam mm -hmm. by a Peter Hammond. There is a book called Islamic Jihad, A Legacy of Forced Conversion, Imperialism, and Slavery by M.A. Khan. There is a, one that talks about the uh, little-known little uh, slave, slavery of the other way around. There's a book by R. Davis called Christian Slaves, Muslim Masters, White Slavery in the Mediterranean, the Barbary Coast in Italy, 1500 to 1800. It's interesting when you see all these different time periods and this uh, slavery just continues to happen. You have by John Azuma, The Legacy of Arab Islam in Africa, A Quest for Interreligious Dialogue. You have also a tainted legacy, Islam, Colonialism, and Slavery in Northern Nigeria by Yusufu Taraki. All of these are going to give people a historical account of slavery, that it still happens today. CL, it's crazy to, for people to realize when they do that slavery is still taking place in certain North African countries today. And uh, Mauritania, I believe, I think the first person uh, to get convicted of any type of crime for being a slave owner didn't even happen until like 10 or 11 years ago. Uh, Saudi Arabia outlawed slavery uh, not too many decades ago, maybe two or three decades. And even at that, it, the practice still happens today. It is not like mm -hmm. the West where we just completely frown uh, upon that practice. It's still happening in many forms throughout the world. And CL, it's been a, a huge blessing to have you here. Uh, we thank God for you being a former Muslim, now Christian, and all the work that you're doing to call Muslims to Jesus Christ and for all the great info that you bring whenever you're on. So thank you so much for being here once again on Rasha Christie's Truth Matters. Thank you. Thank you very much. Friends, we need to think about our need for a savior. We need to look at the actual evidence that is out there. And salvation is found only in the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, there are many groups out there who believe in Jesus, but when you ask them who is Jesus, they have a completely inaccurate understanding of who he is, what he did on our behalf, and how we can be reconciled to the Father through him. Please visit rashuchristi.org to find out more. P pray for this ministry and support us financially. That will allow this vital work to continue. And remember, when it comes to what we believe and why we believe it, truth matters. Mm -hmm.